It's truly a great time for our FPV racing and freestyle hobby. For one, we get to enjoy a pretty rapid rate of tech improvement. Even though I've been into FPV drones for about a little under 3 years, it never ceases to amaze me just how much things have changed. The Mobile 6 Micro Drone is the living embodiment of these rapid changes. It's a very well executed product and at only 20 grams, it's easily one of the smallest and lightest micro drones out there that still zips around plenty fast on brushless motors and handles superbly. I've been buying and trying Happy Models products since the Snapper 7 a few years back, and I have never been disappointed with any of them. The Mobila 7 HT was a particular favorite of mine from 2019, and I'm still planning to try out the Larva X HD a little bit later this year too. That's all just to say that while I do like Happy Model, I will be as always telling things as they are uh, and not be fanboying around. This is not a paid advertisement, just my experience with the Mobula 6 and it blew my mind a little bit. Let's take a look at what the fuss is all about. The unboxing experience is fine, pretty minimalistic, I think in a good way. The Mobula 6 arrives in a small cardboard box and here is everything you get inside. Besides a print copy of the user manual, you get a tiny Philips head screwdriver, prop remover to wall, USB battery charger, four spare Gemfan 12 19 props, four Happy Model branded 1S 300mAh batteries, which is pretty nice, and the Mobile 6 itself. In terms of specs, the biggest deal here is the weight of the drone. The Mobile 6 comes in at barely just 20 grams dry weight with props or 19 grams without the props, as 4 props add roughly to about a gram. The uh, all-up weight with the provided stock battery is just 27.7 grams, and if you try to fly on a GMB 1S 450mAh battery, the all-up weight would be 33.3 grams. Speaking of batteries, the Mobula 6 battery connector is the common and popular among Tiny Whoops PH2.0, um, great for battery reusability if you already have plenty of those lying around. The canopy is plastic and allows for adjusting the camera angle via screws on the sides. I haven't had to do that though. Uh, it looks somewhat sturdy, I think it has maybe a couple of weaker points towards lower back, but let's see how it holds up. The same goes for the frame, I don't expect miracles from it, but it's held up just fine for now and I've smacked my Mobula 6 around for a few weeks, both indoors and outdoors. Um, the only thing so far is the plastic got a bit wider on one spot after a harder impact, but it still didn't crack and remained solid in one piece. If needed, replacement frames are easy to obtain for about $4. I would imagine you could probably even print a micro frame yourself. Let me know in the comments if any of you has ever had some luck with 3D printed frames for micro drones in particular. The battery bay houses the provided 300mAh batteries perfectly as you would imagine. Uh, for bigger batteries you might have to remove the battery bay completely or just use a rubber band for a somewhat decent fit while not damaging the capability to fit perfectly the stock batteries. I'll show how I attached my uh, 450mAh batteries. The Mobula 6 comes with an option of 19,000kV or 25,000kV for the motors. Not super much difference, but I opted in for the 19,000kV version. The motors are the Happy Moto branded SE0802 with a 1mm shaft diameter. They spin up Gemfan 1219 tri-blade props, which provide excellent handling in turns and offer more performance than quad-blade props. Um, everything else on the quad except the camera is on the same PCB. As always, there will be people that like this and those that don't. I'm in the fan camp. Um, the big drawback here, of course, is that burning out one ESC or messing up your VTX or receiver or say breaking the micro USB port and you gotta replace the whole board. On the other hand, you get all the weight reduction and the space savings and in a way the simplicity of just having to order one thing as a replacement. Uh, the built-in VTX and the receiver antennas are guided out the sides of the canopy. There are plenty of holes and options on how to get that done. The camera is Runcam Nano 3. It's a really good, good CMOS camera for its size and it comes in at only 1.2 grams. You can adjust the camera angle via the two screws on the sides of the canopy and possibly adjust the uh, by adjusting the foam padding placed under the camera to combat jello 
which it does, but not 100% successfully. Uh, as you can see in some of my outdoor sample footage. The flight controller board is the crazy B F4 FR light in my case, uh, where the FR part stands to tell it's the FR Sky version with the built-in SPI based FR Sky receiver. Um, it can only handle one S batteries, so don't even think about two S, although the motors wouldn't handle those either. Uh, the receiver is gonna get you about up to a couple hundred meters max. Um, the ESCs are rated for 5 amp continuous current. The onboard VTX transmits at a signal at the signal at 25 milliwatt power and can be controlled via smart audio through the OSD. Uh, the micro USB port is easily accessible and the whole board is mounted to the frame with rubber grommets to dampen vibrations. Overall, especially for being a fairly cheap product, the components are of good quality and the execution and build are very well done. Bonus points for twisting around and sticking between the frame the power leads instead of just leading them straight out from the battery pads. This helps reduce tugging tension on them in the case of ejecting your battery during flight. As with most other quads, to get started, we need to bind the radio controller to the drone's receiver and take a look at the beta flight configuration. The Mobula 6 comes with a printed manual and you can also get it online in PDF form. It's a simple to the point one pager, useful to quickly answer some of your immediate questions, such as, for example, where is the bind button? Um, spoiler alert, it's right next to the motor plug on the back left motor and it's very tiny. I'm using the FR Sky uh, Tyrannus X light radio, but the setup is very similar for most FR Sky radios running OpenTX. Create a new model and go to the setup screen, scroll down, uh, set the mode to D8 and press the bind function button. The radio will start chirping looking for the receiver. Then plug in the drone's battery and press the bind button. The receiver will bind to the radio. Stop the radio bind function by exiting out of it, uh, unplug the drone and plug it back in. At this point you should see a solid green light to verify that there is an active link with the radio. We're almost done. One last thing to do is to go to the mixer screen in the radio and add a few switches um, to channels 5, 6 and 7. Those channels will correspond to AUX 1, 2 and 3 in Betaflight and we will need them to arm and activate various flight modes. Before we even start going through and potentially changing the beta flight configuration, it's a good rule of thumb to export a copy of the current configuration as a backup, in case we need to restore it later. You can do this by going to the CLI tab and running the dump command, um, then save that information to a file. Now you have a backup. If you ever goof up, you can load the configuration back from that file or by pasting its content straight into the CLI here. If you didn't do that, I have a link to the stock Mobula 6 beta flight configuration dump for version 357 in the description. Configuring the Mobula 6 for the first time, I didn't actually have to touch anything in beta flight. And why I'm sharing this is because I've been noticing a trend of having to do less and less before I get up in the air flying while setting up a new quad. I think that's great. And I wanted to take a moment to appreciate it. Tinkering with your quad to your heart's content is not going anywhere, but it's nice to see the barrier of entry getting ever so slightly lowered. And this is great if you want to welcome more and new people to the hobby. 
This is the shortest possible checklist of what I go through quickly when checking a quad's configuration. First, on the configuration tab, I take note whether we're running in props in or props out mode. It's important to know how to put your props on. Um, I take a look at motor stop and make sure it's off. Um, accelerometer on for angle mode is uh, needed in this case. SPI RX support and FR Sky um, underscore D for D8 mode need to be selected. Air mode should be on and RX uh, lost and RX set in case you want to use the motors to beep for a lost model alarm since we don't have an onboard buzzer. Oh good, the defaults match what I expect so no changes needed. Then we jump next to the uh, receiver tab. Here I'm just going to make sure that the channel map is uh, TAER1234. That's what my radio is set up to, to use as a default. And I'm just making sure that the beta flight configuration matches that. All good again. Next, we're looking at the modes tab. Um, arming is set to AUX1, which is the switch you set to channel 5 in your radio. Then I noticed that uh, AUX2, the channel 6 switch, is set by default to start up in angle mode and any other position will put the quad to acro. That's fine too. Um, and then we also have turtle mode or flip over after crash uh, on the third switch. Perfect, no changes needed either. Lastly, I always check also the OSD tab. Um, I Here I want to see if the RSSI value is displayed. Um, I also like seeing the current draw, throttle value, and flight time elapsed. All good. I was very excited and curious to fly the Mobile 6 for the first time. My first immediate impression was how easy it was to handle without sacrificing any performance. It only took me a couple of packs to get pretty comfortable with the drone. I started by flying it on the stock configuration. So here's a look at the maiden indoor flight on the stock 300mAh battery. I always enjoy trying out different battery and prop combinations uh, in my reviews and tests and this time I had a lot of tests to carry out. Uh, besides flying on the stock Happy Model 300mAh battery, I wanted to see if there was any difference with a similar Yashin branded 300mAh uh, battery I had lying around too. The short of it is that there was no noticeable difference. Um, despite the fact that the Yashin battery is engaging in some slight false advertisement stating its C rating is higher than it actually is um, by displaying 40C on the other label and 30C on the actual battery. Um, this makes it essentially identical to the stock Happy Moto battery and since it did not perform um, differently, the test for the Yashin battery ended here. However, the other battery I wanted to try out was the GNB 450mAh battery as I have plenty of those lying around. And since we're doing this for science, I wanted to try out each battery type indoor and outdoor. Then I wanted to do it all again after I did the 48 uh, kilohertz ESC flashing mod. All batteries were high voltage and charged to 4.35 volts. And perhaps the interesting observation was that while I could fly fairly decently indoors on a 450 milliamp hour battery and with increased flight time, the story was quite the opposite outdoors. I got consistently much shorter flight times, had to be almost at all times at more than 60% throttle and I could feel the weight of the battery significantly impacting the flight performance. I'm fairly convinced that a battery of 350mAh would be probably the best option on the flight time versus performance trade-off. But I'll be doing that test soon and for now it's just a hypothesis. In the meantime, the 300mAh batteries are completely a safe bet and deliver a very enjoyable flight experience. The maiden outdoor flight was a really interesting experience. I was very impressed how this little guy held up outdoors and I did not expect it to be that good. Um, my house is a bit too small to be able to fly indoors in acro mode, but that really wasn't the case outside. I really loved flying the Mobila 6 in acro mode. Again, locked in tune, very easy to handle and really enjoyable to fly. I did try flying it uh, on the 450mAh GMB battery. Um, this flight was a bit of a letdown, unlike the indoor uh, flight on the same battery. Now I got consistently short flight times of about two and a half minutes only 
It was a pretty calm day with just a bit of slight breeze every once in a while too. Um, the bigger battery's extra weight seemed to take its toll and it was quite noticeable even when just cruising. So how did things change after I flashed the JSC 48kHz firmware? Well, in the indoor flight on uh, the 300mAh stock battery, on average we gained a flight time increase of about 48 seconds and that's not bad at all. Also, chances are I'm flying even faster than when I was doing the first tests, just because I'm so much more used to the Mobula 6 now. As for the 450mAh battery, it would appear that we lost up to 52 seconds of flight time. Um, given in the first attempts I was flying much less aggressive and I had a few crashes uh, I needed to recover from turtle mode which counted as flying time. This could explain the result. However, um, I never claimed nor attempted for a super high accuracy scientifically correct experiment but the point here for me still stands. At best there is no improvement in flight time with the heavier battery. And I have to admit that at this point I kind of lost interest to really pursue some very precise and accurate results just because it was pretty clear also based on the experience of the outdoor flight that the 450mAh battery is just not going to be. However, I will be doing tests on a 350mAh battery because I do believe that that's probably the best fit for the Mobula 6. Let's talk upgrades for a second. We already get pretty decent flight times of about four to four and a half minutes. What if we could push this further? Um, I mentioned already the 48 kilohertz ESC firmware. This has been an amazing discovery slash knowledge shared around our FPV community. I first found out about it in uh, Joshua Barbell's Mobula 6 videos comment section posted by a user called uh, Dan Miller. So thanks for sharing that with us, Dan. Um, I'll go through the exact procedure in just a second. But first, let's list the other potential upgrades you could do to the Mobula 6 to improve flight times. So besides grabbing 30 seconds to a minute um, worth of flight time extra by just flashing your ESCs with the 48 kilohertz uh, firmware, um, you could also maybe consider replacing the PH2.0 connector with the new um, BT2.0 connector by Beta FPV. It's claimed to deliver up to 10% battery overall performance boost, so you might feel like going for it. Um, in addition, you could also go for removing the motor plugs and direct solder the motors to the board. Unless I get very bored, I won't be bothering with this one probably, but I'm curious to hear if anyone has had like a significant improvement in performance. You could also opt in to use RPM filters. My Mobula 6 came with the Betaflight 3.5.7 on it, um, but if you switch to Betaflight 4.1, you could do RPM filters. Filters are known to improve flight characteristics. I'm not sure if they will help with battery life, but chances are they might. And as I mentioned already, I'm curious to learn if the 350mAh um, battery is really the best pick in terms of weight versus performance. And finally, are there better props? Um, this seems a little bit like a long shot as the gym fan props already perform stellarly, but you never know, there always could be better props. So with all of these things in mind, I'm just wondering if we can get up uh, up to 7 or why not even 8 minutes of flight time on the Mobula 6. Uh, let me know if you carry out all of these upgrades and you manage to reach some sick flight times. I'd be very happy to hear about it. So let's have a look how to flash the Mobula 6 um, ESCs for 48 kilohertz. This is the one upgrade that it's gonna take you about a minute to do, but we'll increase your flight times. but by at least 30 seconds up to a minute. It's that simple and you should do it. Now I normally use BL Heli Configurator to do my ESC flashing and you can use it to do the 48 kHz firmware upgrade. However, that path requires a little bit of more manual file downloading and uh, it's a bit more error prone while using the JESC Configurator is super straightforward. So we're just gonna do that. First, um, if you Google for JESC Configurator um, and open the releases and the install instructions links, um, in my case, the first and the third result, the releases link is going to take you to the um, corresponding page for the JESC Configurator project on GitHub, where you could download the software for your operating system. 
download and extract the package and then start up the software. The other link we opened um, contains the installation instructions and is the only thing to pay attention to. As highlighted um, here, we need to check if H is the middle letter in the ESC code once we read um, our ESC's configuration into the JSC configurator. As a rule of thumb, always take off the props when dealing with drone ESCs or flight controller configuration. Um, next, plug in the Mobula 6 via a micro USB cable to the computer and also plug in a battery since we need power to read the ESC setup. Um, then let's look at the configurator. It's very similar to BioHeli configurator. Um, select the correct COM port from the uh, drop down and then click the connect button. On the next screen, let's click the read setup uh, button in the bottom right hand side. If all goes well, you should now see all four ESCs listed in the right half of the JSC configurator. Take a look at the ESC code and make sure the middle letter is H as mentioned in the requirements in uh, as a requirement in JSC's installation instructions. Finally, let's click on flash all. And in the last step, you can select JSC version uh, 2.3 with the 48 kilohertz um, option from the version and click flash. Wait until all four ESCs are flashed successfully. And when done, click the disconnect button at the top right and unplug your quad from the micro USB and the battery. Congratulations, you now have on average 30 seconds longer flight times for free. How cool is that? In my eyes, Happy Moto has once again delivered a fun experience. I'm trying hard not to overhype or call the Mobula 6 a technological achievement, but in my opinion, it kind of is. It comes at a very affordable price for what it offers. You get four batteries to rip around, which for many beginners could just as well be enough. With flight times of about four and a half to five and a half minutes, chances are by the time you've flown your other three batteries, the first will have charged up uh, if you plugged it in immediately after it flew it. So you could go for some pretty long flight sessions continuously recharging your batteries. Um, if this is your first quad getting into the hobby, I'm very comfortable recommending it as you will get an outstanding indoor experience and you would be able to rip some packs practicing acro mode outside as well. I love how light it is and even though it already flies really well on Betaflight 3.5.7, upgrading to 4.1 and flashing the ESCs for 48kHz uh, PWM and the other potential upgrades I've highlighted um, could deliver some outstanding flight times. That's cool because if this is your entry into the hobby, you can learn so much by tinkering with these things and trying out different setups. At the same time, even if you just want to grab it and fly, you can do that in seconds. As I mentioned earlier, I had nothing to do in beta flight this time around. This too is amazing because it lowers the barrier of entry to our hobby. And really, if you have a pair of goggles and a radio, you can just bind to this guy in a few seconds and literally start flying. I'm looking forward to ripping more and more packs on the Mobula 6 throughout the remainder of the winter, and I'll surely take it out with me when I start going to parks in the spring. Happy flying!